you guys um I was out here harvesting some hibiscus and thought hey I should probably show you guys what I do when I um when I do that but then I had a bee come after me <laughs> and I got stung last week and had a really bad reaction to it so I've been steering clear of the bees here lately um they were checking me out the, the one that got me I mean that was following me just a little bit ago wasn't um wasn't very like aggressive but I wasn't gonna take any chances because I had a really bad like I said reaction last week so we don't want any more stings <laughs> so anyway I'm gonna I'm walking over here to the hibiscus where I've been harvesting and the bee was kind of checking out the hibiscus that I had harvested so I don't know if um if they can just smell the sweetness and um they wanted some of that or or what because they're not really on the plant um and i have some monarch calipiters over there that i need to figure out if i can rehome because they have eaten my milkweed down to the bone so let me flip this around and we'll look at the hibiscus and i'll show you a little bit about that and then we'll go over here and move some monarch calipiters how's that sound fun huh okay so here's my the one hibiscus that i've been working on just this morning and uh it's breezy out here and it's nice because you know the hurricane and everything which we could use some rain from that but you know we don't really want any devastation or anything so sending some love to those places that are really getting hammered right now um so here we have you can see all the let me put this thing down okay you can see like there's the flower i think i've talked about that before well it's not letting me go in um oh yeah there we go there's the flower and so here's the calyxes that we're going to be harvesting so when you harvest the calyx you want it to be a pretty decent size so let's see so this here is about the smallest that you would want to um harvest this here is a really good size so see it's starting to dry a little bit and that seed pod in there is gonna be um exploding and opening before long so over here on these you can see the little bees and animals <laughs> on these because i guess they can smell um the sugar or whatever that's concentrated in the plant um so all you do i usually do my little take my little snippers and snip them off but you don't have to snip them but you need to be careful because usually let's see if i can get this in there usually can you see right beside it there it's got like a little another calyx or flower coming out so you don't want to damage that so you just want this right here so you might be able to just pop it off like that and then where am i there's your little your calyx and that's what you harvest to make your tea and I'll show you later on how to take the seed pot out so that you can dry because if you try to dry it with the seed pot in it, let's see if I can get it open with one hand here. Um, see that seed pot down in there? So it's really difficult to dry with that seed pot on there because it will um, it'll get moldy and you, I ruined a whole batch last year doing that. Um, so. I'm gonna give you a quick little roundabout of the garden so because I haven't done one uh, thing in a while um, so see we have the beautiful sunflowers over there they are just I just look out here and just like oh they're so pretty um, and then I'm tripping over dog and then here's I'm getting really close to this beehive it's making me nervous um, these are teddy bear sunflowers down here and they've about done all they're gonna do I'm probably gonna let me pull this back out I'm probably gonna replant some in here and then these are a tall sunflower tall orange I think is the name of those they're a little different and then look I've got a gourd y'all isn't that like the coolest thing and it's climbing up so hopefully it'll it'll give me some more gourds other than just the one but I'd be happy with just the one actually so and then this was the bed where all the Tulsi was in there with the Dan Shin um, oops so I uh, I harvested all of the Tulsi and took it in the house so it's dry and it's ready to like process and stuff 
And then I'll need to pull up all of these beans because they've about run their route. Um, I could probably plant something else there. I planted some peas the other day. I think I planted the peas down on this end of that trellis there. So hopefully I can get some out of that. Some peas. And then here's some zinnias and the rue. And then we still got beans growing up there, which I also need to, I need to pull those out. Um, I harvested nettle the other day as well. I've been really busy harvesting. So the, the nettle looks a little um, cut back. It was really huge. And I harvested lemongrass, so it's starting to grow back. And uh, there's the other nettle that I also harvested the other day, which actually I could probably harvest some more if I wanted off of that. Um, and we've got zinnias and I pulled up those beans. It was a cucumber vine in there. So I had to pull that up. These noodle beans are just crazy. I need to get over here and just do something with all of that. And then the, <laughs> these sunflowers are so tall they're about ready to fall over because I don't have anything supporting them, which I should. And then the zinnias. I don't know why the zinnias are getting those little spots on them. Do any of you guys know why they get those little spots on them? It's just, I don't know. And then there's an okra right there in the middle. You can see that. That's my okra plant. And then another hibiscus, which I need to come over here and harvest some off of it too. I've, I've gotten a few off of that one. But um, not, not as many as I've gotten off of the other one. So there's a spot over here on the ground. I'm going to show you guys this. Because I think it's just crazy. Ow. I don't fall. Over here on the ground, there's the bees love it over here. I don't know if you can see them. See those bees? The other day when I come out here, there was like a blanket of them. I mean, you couldn't even see the ground. There were so many. But look at all those bees. I don't know what they like other than water in that ground, but they like it. So, noodle beans. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to walk over there. We're going to walk around this way around the hibiscus and I don't even think I can get through over here <laughs> so and this is what happens when you plant when you put the beds too close together so we got Tulsi in here I harvested a bunch of the um there's all kinds of bees on this Tulsi I harvested a bunch of the anise so that was over here goji berries there's a bee right there on the goji berry flower I've got little berries coming out can you see those little berries so I need to come over here and harvest Tulsi again on this little at this bed. I might just pull those up again. Ooh, I see you be. Um yeah, so there's that. And we got the dock coming up over there. I might try to harvest some of that dock root and see um what I can do with that because that's good medicine. And then we got Elecum Pain over there, which I gotta move that black thing out of the way. And then Here's some more sunflowers leaning over. I've harvested some sunflowers to get the to get the um, seeds out of them, so I can plant them again next year. And this little flower right here, I've already said in all my other videos how much I love this flower, but y'all, it's just gorgeous. It just keeps on keeping on. <laughs> it has no worries with uh, anything. You don't care if it's dry or wet or whatever. It just keeps growing. And then the bone set over here, I'll har see those white flowers? I harvested some of that just now. I need to put a stake in this. So, and I left some for the, for the pollinators because there was a lot of pollinators on it. And the mugwort, I harvested some today too. I'm gonna make some smudge sticks, I think, of those. Wow, can y'all see those bees all over those beehives? I don't know if you can see it or not. They're bearding on the front of the hive. Must be hot in there. And then let's see, over here we have the hollyhocks, which are really pretty. Ooh, what was that? They're really pretty. Those are like a double, I think. They're just. This is not a hollyhock, this is a lamb's quarters. <laughs> I might pinch that off and give some to the chickens. And then the butterfly weed. But I saw my monarchs over here. Let's see if I can find them now. They're probably gone. I hope the chickens didn't get them. I wonder if the chickens ate them. That's not cool. Did y'all eat my 
Piper, did you eat my caterpillars? They were crawling along. Oh, I see one right there. Let me see if I can get it before the chickens get it. You better not eat my caterpillars, dude. I'll get you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, come on, buddy. I'm gonna take you over here. I found one. See? See if we can take them over here and put them in the garden. Maybe he'll find something to eat. We read that they can eat squash plants, so we're gonna, I'm going to take them over here and put them on my squash plant and see how well they do if I can figure out where my squash plant is. So, there it is. Okay. Come here, buddy. I'm going to put you over here and see. I hope I don't step on any bees. I got a, there's a blackberry going crazy. Come here. Put you over here. There you go. So we'll leave him on there and see if he can see if he likes any of that. Maybe he'll find something he can eat. Okay. So, ooh, look another gourd. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna have more than one. At least two. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, hey guys. Um, so I harvested all of my hibiscus um, and some other stuff while I was out in the garden today, but it's gotten dark now and um, the hurricane is supposedly moving in, although I don't think we're going to get any rain from it, um, unfortunately. Some places are getting some rain. Some people wish they weren't getting as much rain as they are, I, I would assume. Um, but anyway, sending some love and light to those people who are um, dealing with that right now. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about hibiscus and its uses and how to prepare it. Um, you've seen the plant. You saw me harvest. I'm going to show you how to take the little seed pods out, um, and uh, which is nothing difficult at all. And um, then we're going to talk a little bit about what it's good for and um, how you can prepare it for yourself and your family. Um, so I have my basket of hibiscus that I harvested today. This is my third harvest. And um, once these little pods right here dry, there's not a lot to them. So you need a lot of hibiscus to be able to, to um, it's a good thing the plants are so prolific, to be able to, you know, have enough to make teas and stuff throughout the whole season that they're not growing. Because they are an annual here in North Carolina, which is where I'm at. Um, if you live somewhere tropical, um, I think you can use them as a perennial, or they will be a perennial for you. Um, it gets too cold here for them to be able to sustain life outside. Um, I'm not really sure where they would be a perennial. I haven't looked that up. But I have seen some YouTube videos on it where some people, like in other countries, have had it... Um, growing there as a perennial and they talk about how to cut them back and take care of them and stuff during the off season because I guess they do have an off season but um, I wanted to show you my little screen that I have here now this is my dried hibiscus from my other harvests I think I got the biggest harvest that I've gotten so far today um, my other harvests have been kind of small but I'm going to show you this is this is one that I've already taken the little seed pot out. See how big that is? And this is very succulent. See this like sheath or whatever it's got on the inside? It's got a lot of moisture in it. So once they dry, this is what it looks like. See, it's all dried up and brittle. Um, you can cut these up into little smaller pieces if you want or just leave them you know, this size if you want to too. Um, I just take once they are completely dry just make sure that they're completely dry because if you put something in a jar an airtight jar and it's not completely dry it can mold and it will ruin your whole your whole batch so you don't want to be drinking moldy tea um, so I put them on this little rack here to dry and um, they dry fairly well if you have a dehydrator you can use a dehydrator and I'm not really sure I've never used a dehydrator I had one and I got rid of it because it said you couldn't use it with aromatic herbs. 
and that's what I needed my dehydrator for. So you need to read the fine, fine print when you buy a dehydrator and they're not cheap. <laughs> so, and I had tried to go the cheap route and buy, bought one that wasn't as expensive as some of the ones that I've seen. But lesson learned, um, I will be bu buying me a dehydrator um, once I start, because once I start my real job. Um, <laughs> I'm a tax preparer, so my tax season comes up in January and that's when I'll start making a little bit of extra money. Um, this herb business, yeah, you make some money, but it's not nothing like, um, I don't make as much as I spend. <laughs> I spend a lot on plants and flowers and seeds and I'm trying to grow things myself so that I don't uh, spend as much money on the stuff and harvesting things for myself instead of having to buy herbs, which I do buy herbs sometimes because there's some things that are just impossible to grow here in North Carolina like some Chinese herbs and things that I use. Um, so I try to use the stuff that I've grown myself. I'm trying to get more into that, into growing the herbs myself and harvesting them myself and because they're so, they stay fresh for so much longer. Even though, you know, the herb companies say that they, you know, keep their herbs and they're really fresh and all this stuff. And I really haven't had a lot of issues when I purchase them from like Mountain Rose Herbs or, um, or, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank frontier. Um, those are my two main places that I get herbs from. And they, um, they're usually fresh when I get them. It's just that I don't know how long they've been sitting there by the time they ship them to me. And plus the time that it takes for them to ship them to me. So if I were to go outside and dry them and everything myself, I mean, they're way fresher than anything they could send me. So that's what I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to just use the herbs that um, I can grow here and, and take care of and everything. I know they don't have any chemicals. I know they've been loved and t cared for, and so it's nice to know where your stuff comes from. That's why a lot of people, you know, want to grow their own food and vegetables and things because they know where it's come from. Um, the same reason why we raise chickens and we raise meat birds because we know that they were taken care of um, and they were loved and treated well and had a nice life when they were here with us. So, you know, that's just the whole thing about, you know, being a homesteader is um, taking care of your stuff and and doing things and knowing where things come from, right? So you, you, you don't have to worry about, you know, is there's this chemical in this? Did they feed this bird this? Or did, you know, they spray it with whatever? So you don't have to worry about that when you do it yourself, right? Okay, so let's get back to hibiscus. So this is my little hibiscus calyx. I love these things. They're just the cutest things ever. I remember the first, last year when I first started <laughs> harvesting these, I had no freaking clue what to do. I couldn't find any videos on YouTube. I did not know. Um, I mean, I knew that this was supposedly what you were supposed to um, harvest, but I would cut the little small ones thinking, oh, this would be easier because, you know, they're really small or whatever. You're really doing yourself a disservice if you cut the really small ones because they haven't gotten to full size and you're not really getting anything out of them. Um, and they're really difficult to get off those seed balls when they're small like that because trust me, I've done it. Um, and these things, actually, this one is even smaller than the biggest size. I think I might have gotten one or two that are just huge. And really the longer you can leave them on there, the better, because they do get really big. So this is a good size one. Um, they still get a little bit bigger than this. I like to get them before the seed pod bursts though. Um, you don't have to, you could leave them on there and let the seed pod burst and just, you know, get the, the calyx after that. Which some of the, um, when I buy hibiscus from like Frontier um, or I th maybe Mountain Rose, I can't remember which one that I get them from, that um, they have the, like some seeds in with the, uh, with the calyxes. So I don't know why they do that, but they, they do. Um, I don't leave any seeds in mine. I go ahead and take everything off and then I just throw the seed pods out. I've got some I've got in here that I took off my last batch and I'm going to see if they burst without being on the calyx just to see what happens, you know, because we like, I like to, to do things like that just to see and that way I'll know. Um, but anyway, all you need to do, see, that's where it was connected to the, 
to the tree to the um, stem that was out there so I just take my finger and stick it inside and just start kind of peeling it and you have to be careful because it's real crunchy and you can scrape the red off and your fingers are going to turn red I just want to let you know and I just peel it off right here at the base where that little stem part was and just peel it and then there you go so see you I have that little base still on there this is your seed pod that was inside and this is your hibiscus that you're gonna dry and if it breaks if you don't get it off in one spot it, in one piece it, it's already come apart that doesn't matter um, you can have it in several pieces it's just when you scratch this part out here I'll scratch some for you and show you see it comes off and um, so just and then it's all over your fingers so just you know be careful with that and try to just get up under it and uh, pull this this part that's right up here off and then you'll take these and you'll just dry them you like I said put them in a dehydrator put them on a screen um, if you don't have a screen um, put them flat lay them single layer on um, something you can just put a cloth down on a table and do it there um, just whatever you have you can use um, don't think that just because you don't have a screen or because you don't have all this technical stuff you can't do it you can trust me I've done all kinds of crazy things drying herbs trying to anyways and I did last year I just laid them all out you know like this and thought okay well they'll just they'll dry you know I had no clue that the seed, the seed pod was in there some of the seed pods burst when I had them laying out they molded oh it was awful and I'm like well <laughs> I'm doing something wrong and so finally I think I found a YouTube on uh, a video on YouTube where this lady was showing how to do it and how to take them off uh, take them out of this off the seed pods and stuff and that's where I was like oh that's what I'm doing wrong so live and learn right so the way you want to prepare hibiscus hibiscus is a lovely tea um, in the summer it's just it's so refreshing it's astringent um, <clears throat> so it really helps to like rehydrate it's good for blood pressure um, heart issues whenever you're thinking of heart um, think of your red herbs or red things that you eat like beets or um, grapes or cherries or things like that anything with that red color um, is usually good for your heart um, so that's how I kind of remember things things that are yellow are good for urinary tract things you know you just you kind of learn these things as you go and you start learning about herbs and their medicinal uses so um, I usually take about three heaping three or four heaping tablespoons of hibiscus three or four heaping tablespoons of hibiscus um, in a half gallon jar like a big one not the quart size but the half gallon if you're doing quart I'd say maybe two um, tablespoons and I'll fill it up with water and I usually just make a sun tea out of it I'll put it in the window and let it sit there all day and then I'll strain it and then um, I might put a little bit of honey in there and stick it in the refrigerator and it lasts no time here um, my husband loves it my stepdaughter mini me loves it and I love it too so um it's and if it's really hot and you're sweaty and everything and you come in and drink a big old glass of that and it is so good it will quench your thirst um but it's really good for you as well and it's easy to grow you guys just you know get you if you don't feel comfortable starting this seed get a plant there's you know people that don't get okay don't get the hibiscus plants that you see in Lowe's and these big box places um it's not the same um, the hibiscus that they sell is you know it's an annual too and it has a real real huge flowers um, but Lowe's and Home Depot or whatever kind of big box store that you know of they put so much crap on their plants I would not use any of that for medicine um, so just you know be wary of that I would get if you were getting a plant you need to get a roselle it's called roselle oh my gosh I can't think of the botanical name I'll have to look that up for you um, I'll put a little note up there I'll look it up 
It's Roselle something, um, but it is a special plant that's specifically for you know the tea. Um, there's other perennial hibiscus plants that I have outside that is not for tea because I didn't know that either, and I had some perennials outside, and I thought it was the flower, and I thought, well, okay, we, you know, I can get the flower and make a tea out of. No, that's not that's not what it is. So you know, don't feel bad if you don't know because I did not know. Um, I learned that myself when I started growing this. But once you get a plant and plant it in the ground, here in North Carolina, it's so easy to grow. I mean, it barely needs water. I mean, yeah, it needs water, but it's not like my stragglers out there that's fighting for its life because I haven't watered it enough um, because it needs a lot of water. Like at the few for few and different plants that I've got out there that really need water. So, um, they're fairly easy to take care of and then all you have to do is go out there and clip them off and I usually go out there about once a week and um clip the the calyxes I might have to start going out there more often now because they are there are a lot on the on the plant and I left some that I didn't really think were ready enough to to harvest so you just have to um keep an eye on it and check it and it took a couple of them one of them still doesn't have enough on there to or one big enough for me to to deal with but I wanted to make sure I had plenty of hibiscus this year because um, I ran out this past year well partially because I didn't know what I was doing but um, I wanted to make sure I had enough to carry us through until I've I'll be able to grow it again next year um, I'm gonna try to grow my own plants this year coming up I did not this past year because I planted so many other things and I have a friend that um, she grows these things and I just as well get it from her because I know that she takes very good care of her plants and she doesn't use chemicals or anything like that. She has a farm and Pat, hey Pat, love you. Um, she's always hooking me up with some um, awesome herbs, medicinal herbs and stuff that you can't really find in the, in the stores. So um, I wanted to read to you. I've got a book by Aviva Rahm. If you've never heard of her, look her up. She's an awesome herbalist. She's also a medical doctor. And honestly, I, could, I had a really difficult time finding anything about hibiscus in my main books that I usually use um, to look up herbs. And that's crazy because hibiscus is amazing. <laughs> Which it's not, you know, you don't really tincture it. I've never really heard of anyone tincturing it because the tea is so good. Um, so maybe that's why. I'm, I'm really not sure. But, um, okay, so in Aviva Rahm's book, which this book was gifted to me from a friend, a very dear friend of mine who's also an herbalist. She went through herb school with me, Sarah. And um, it's Botanical Medicine for Women's Health by Aviva Rahm. And she talks about hibiscus in her chapter on cardiovascular health. And this is what she says. It says, recent trial evidence suggests that hibiscus tea may, be ben may benefit diabetic patients with mild hypertension. A group of 60 patients who were not taking antihypertensive or anti-hyperlipidemic anti medicines ingested either one cup of sweetened hibiscus daily or black tea as a control. After one month, patients who consumed the hibiscus demonstrated a decrease in average systolic but not diastolic blood pressure. So it lowers blood pressure. Um, and that's all that she really says about um, hibiscus. But, you know, that's a doctor, you know, talking about the benefits of an herb. So that's always really a good thing to hear when you hear um, doctors giving the yahoos to, to herbs. Um, so I guess that about wraps it up about hibiscus today. I hope you enjoyed the small, um, walk out in the garden we had. I didn't really do a whole lot today. Um, I'm so busy harvesting and, and trying to get things dried and put away and may, I've got some jewel weed on the stove right now. I went and harvested a whole bunch of jewel weed, which that's a whole nother lesson. Um, and, um, also finishing up one on Tulsi. I'm going to talk about what Tulsi is good for and um, and I talk about harvesting it and drying it um, and showing you what to do with that. My dogs are being playful now. So I hope that you can learn a little bit about these herbs. The, these are like really safe and you know don't really have any contraindications. So I would like for you to learn about these and get excited and grow you some medicine at home and feel empowered to um, 
to make this stuff it's it's really good and it's really good for you and um and i hope that you learned something and if you have any questions or you're confused <laughs> which i stay confused um just let me know leave me a comment um look me up on instagram at crazy herb lady or um i'm on facebook with native roots apothecary which is the name of the um herbal business that i started and um my husband and i are going to do a little small video um introducing this channel this youtube channel we didn't really want to name it native roots apothecary because i'm going to get him to do some stuff that in that he is interested in like um he takes care of the bees and he does ham radio which i, I got my ham radio license as well which i didn't even know what ham radio was until i met him um so that's kind of a geeky side and um so he suggested that we name the channel the goddess and the geek so that's where it come from um and so we'll be introducing ourselves and he hasn't really been on here much because he has a daytime job and um i'm not really busy right now except for with the herbs so i do a little bit more video and than he does but he is going to jump in and 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 do some stuff as well especially when i'm really busy in january february and on with my taxes so we'll be checking you guys later and like i said follow me on instagram like the page on facebook um, leave me a comment subscribe to our channel we love having you i love questions so let me know we'll talk at you later and peace to y'all